Good evening, Canterbury. Welcome to Newsmakers, where we debate the week's big talking points. It's a pleasure to introduce this week's cast of commentators from the CDHB executive member Hector Matthews. From Kia ora. Kia ora. From the Council of Social Services, Sharon Torstenson. Okay. And senior writer from the press, Jura of the Year, Martin Van Bainen. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Mike. That was a very gratuitous introduction. <laughs> I do apologise. Um, the Christchurch City Council has just uh, finalised its long-term council community plan, which sets in motion the funding blueprint for the next 10 years. There are <coughs> so many possible discussion points stemming from this plan, but just starting with a few brass tacks. Does the Mayor deserve to be applauded for honouring an election promise to get rates down under 5%? Hector. Well, I guess uh, in, uh, in one short sentence, yes, because they are down below 5% the rise. Mm. I do get grumpy, though, that they just keep rising. Um, you know, I've been a rate payer now in Christchurch for more than 20 years, and I don't think I can recall a year where it hasn't gone up. Um, so I, I get a bit grumpy about that, and it, it seems the, uh, the council... It's a bit like Skynet for the Terminator fans. It's become self-aware. It's become so big that it, it wants to take on everything. Um, and, you know, they, they do some great stuff, and they, they're kind of outside the square when you compare them to Wellington and Auckland. Um, but, I, you know, I think a whole lot of Joe Average um, ratepayers will be continually getting grumpy about why does, it, why does it have to be 5%? Why can't it just be 0% for a few years? Do you think that's a realistic demand on the council, the, the prospect of, look, just leave my pocket alone and just take what you did last year, don't take any more? What do you think, Martin? Well, inflation being what it is, is probably is a little unrealistic to expect the same sort of services for, um, for the same price. However, um, I'm sure that someone like Hector, for instance, could go through every item on the council spending list and, and chop a few out, and I'm sure I could too. Um, so, yeah, it's a highly... Um, I mean, I, I commend the council for keeping it under 5%. Um, but, yes, wouldn't it be nice if something actually went down for a change? Mm. Are you concerned that part of the lowering of the rates rise increase has been uh, delivered by ramping up debt, you know, um, in the long term? Is that a concern or is that understandable given the recessionary climate we're in? Well... It's, it's very understandable, and I'd rather the council spend during a recession than, than uh, pull back. Yeah. Uh, what I think the, 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 what they should do next is, is when things start to improve, that's the time to start cutting spending, and that's the time to start repaying debt and making sure that when, making sure they've got something in the coffers next time there's a recession, as, as, as there always is. Um, I think I hope the lesson has been learnt that you spend governments, local governments, and governments should spend during a. Um, a recession and save when things are good. Sharon, let me come to you because one of the most contentious decisions pertaining uh, to the LTCCP is community grants funding and there have been some chops and changes. Why is your organisation so perturbed? In a recession, it's the community groups that provide the glue to hold their communities together. <coughs> We've got a lot of people now whose lives have been overturned by losing their jobs. Um, by cuts in services, and they need the community support. When you look at what the grants have been cut by, um, it's a huge amount for the grants budget, but not a huge amount as far as a percentage of the rates goes. I'm also concerned that for several years now the City Council hasn't been adjusting the grant budget for inflation. So even though rates have been going up by at least the cost of inflation, the grants budget's been held um, flat, so in real terms that's declining. Is there a danger that the council is used far too often as a glorified social welfare, social development <coughs> kind of ministry in Christchurch? I mean, $28 million, $29 million, a lot of ratepayers will say, that's big bucks, what are you moaning at, woman? <laughs> not all of that money comes from rates, for yeah. a start. A lot of it is, well, sorry, not a lot of it, but some of it comes from other areas to be allocated by the council but not raised by the council. The Local Government Act, which came out in 2002 after lots of consultation, gave city councils and local councils a lot more power and, res and responsibility. And the power and responsibility was regarding the total well-being of their cities. So their social well-being, their cultural well-being, their environmental well-being. You can't do that on two bob. Okay. You've got to work in partnership. Indeed. Two bob indeed. Yes. Um, 
Can I just come to Martin and Hector? As a point of comparison, the community grants have been uh, compared to the big spend-up on the tram. And we now have the tram tootling through City Mall and the Strip, and then it will head off down High Street to the Polytech and the Basilica. Is this, is this grandiose, or is this quite visionary, Martin? I think we need to make up our minds whether the tram is a, um, a tourist gimmick or it's a, um, a viable method of um, local transport. Once we sort that out, then I think we can start arguing about whether it should go to the Basilica or it should go to um, Motor Vale or somewhere like that. But, um, but until, and whether we can, and I suppose the other issue is whether we can combine the two. Mm. But the tram at the moment to me is, is, it's always seemed a bit silly to me, but I have to accept that tourists love it. I remember doing a story on, on um, you know, on tourism in Christchurch and going around uh, asking a lot of tourists what they thought, and they all love the tram. Yeah. So, you know, it looks silly to me, but I, I accept that um, that it might be quite worthwhile. I'd love to see it go to Mona Vale, for instance. I mean, that, that to me, would, would would help tourism and also bring in all those people that clog Pavanui Road. Through the park? Hackley Park? Yeah, put it through the park. <laughs> Why not? dangerous stuff, Why not? <coughs> You no, don't brilliant. mess with the park, Martin. No, look, there's a big, there's a look, another another road down there will be all right. <laughs> Hector, what do you think? Yeah, I, I um, I've never actually viewed the tram as a viable um, transport uh, or commuter um, transport through through the city. It, it seems to be targeted more at tourists. So I think Martin's right there. Um, locals tend not to use it to get up and down the city. If we decided we wanted to go down that commuter transport route, then a lot more needs to be done. Because uh, you know, going loop de loop around New Regent Street and so on isn't really going to cut the mustard. Mm. Um, and I, uh, I guess that the idea of going towards the uh, Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament, the Basilica, is it, it seems like it's associated with the World Cup coming up. Is, is it trying to direct traffic towards Lancaster Park or what are we calling it now? AMI, AMI Stadium. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and, and I guess yeah. I can see why that because it, 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 it seems to be a natural route past the cathedral. I don't know how the cathedral feels about that, but it will be. You'll get tens of thousands of people, especially at quarter-final time, yeah. making their way up High Street um, and uh, probably through CPIT campus and so on. So I can see why uh, they've probably got that in mind. Um, you know, we have to be careful of spending, but if, if, that's, if it's planned in that respect and it, it enables people to get around the city a bit more and the tourists love it, then it probably is a good idea. OK. In a moment, we'll have a look at the seabed and the foreshore. Also, trucks, heavier trucks, coming to a highway near you. Do stay with us.